Welcome to the second video on Boolean logic and in this video I would like to expose you to the laws of logic. Now we know now the different operations but like with everything else in mathematics there has to be some sort of rule that governs these operations. So let's go through these laws of logic. The first law that I would like to mention to you is called the double negative. Basically, what happens if I apply the negation or the not twice to the same input? Well, think about it. What is not not p? Well, if p is true, then not p is false and not false is true. So, I end up with the original value that I started with. And remember that these three lines together, it's not just simply equal, it's logically equivalent. So it doesn't matter if I write not not p or p, I am talking about exactly the same thing. So they are very, very closely connected. That was the first law. Let's look at the next law, which we call the idempotent law. Now this idempotent law gives us some information about what to do if I apply the operation to the same input. So P and P, what is that going to give me? Well, P and P always going to give me P. Why? If P is true, then true and true gives me true, which is what P was. And if P is false, then false and false gives me false, which is again what P was. How does that change if I have got the OR operation? P or P. Well, it doesn't really change because I end up again with the same thing. True or true gives me true, which was P, and force or force again gives me force, which was P. Let's look at the identity law. And this law now talking about what happens if I combine together an input with a true or a false value. So P and true. What is that logically equivalent to? Think about it. If P is true, true and true will give me true, which was the same as P. But if P is false, false and true gives me false. So it doesn't matter if P is true or false, if I combine together P with an with a true using the AND operation, I'm always going to end up with what P was. This true doesn't really make any difference in that. What happens now if I use P or the false symbol in here? Now, if P was true, true or false give me the true, but if P was false, false or false again gives me the false. So again, I'm going to end up with what P was. So P or force is logically equivalent to P. Now, these loads of logic are really helpful because if you have got a long complicated logic sentence and you want to make it simpler, these are the rules, these are the laws that you can apply to break that complication down and see a little bit easier what is actually going on. The next law is the annihilation. And the annihilation is kind of telling you when would your input annihilate, disappear. So if you had got P and false, remember once you have got false in the end gate, which was two taps on the same pipe, it doesn't matter if P is on or off, water won't go through. So this is always going to be false. And what happens if you have got P or true? Basically, this is when you had two branches of the water and it doesn't matter if P is turned on or off, the water will always be able to flow through the other branch. So this is always going to be true. The next law is the inverse law. So what happens if I add together P and not P? Well, if P is true, then not P is false and two, true and false gives me false. 
But what happens if P is false? If P is false, then not P is true, but false and true are still false. So in this case, I'm always going to end up with a false answer. And what happens if I have got P or not P? If P is true, not B is false. But remember, one of them is true, so I'm going to end up with a true sign in here. If P is false, then not P is true. So again, I have got a true sign in here, so I will be able to get through with the water. So this is always going to be true. Next look, commutative. You're probably familiar with this term. You might have heard it, uh, addition and, sub and multiplications are being commutative. And in there, basically what you meant by is that 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. Uh, or 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. And that's exactly what we mean by commutative law in here. P and Q is the same as Q and P. And I can also say that P or Q is exactly the same as Q or P. So the operation in which I put these inputs in doesn't make difference as far as the output concerned. Another law that you're probably familiar with from algebra is the associative law. Remember that you could use the brackets and you can combine the brackets as long as the same operation is concerned. So what I mean by P and Q and R is exactly the same as P and Q and R. Or if I apply it to the OR operation, P or Q or R is exactly the same as P or Q or R. So as far as I'm using exactly the same operations, doesn't matter where I place the bracket. The bracket can be flexibly placed. And it's again, sometimes quite good to know to move around and be able to manipulate these expressions to simplify them. One more law that could be familiar from algebra is the uh, distributive law. And what the distributive law tells you that is P and Q or R can be written as P and Q or P and R. So what's going on in here? Your end operator distributed amongst the two other inputs and your OR operator now become in between the brackets. And what happens if I change these operators? If I use the OR here and the END here. This is the same again. P or Q and P or R. So again, I can distribute my OR operator into the brackets and I can keep the AND operator between the brackets. This is similar to what happens in mathematics. If you remember 2 times 3 plus X, you can rewrite it as 2 times 3 plus 2 times the x. Okay, so your plus now here become the one in the middle and the multiplication distributed over the addition. Now I have introduced you to quite a few laws of logic. In a further video I will show you the rest of the laws.